I'm Lady Askan and today we want to talk about the Unity Store. How it works, where you can find your purchases after and stay until the end to find out how to find free 3D assets for your v right avatars. First, we open a new project in Unity. As you can see, the asset startup is right here at the top beside the scene and game tab. In case it doesn't show up there by default, you can also select it from the window menu. Though, they had a recent update where you can't open the store directly within Unity anymore, which makes this advice pretty useless. So instead, you would open the store in your web browser. But how can you get your assets then? You would have to go to the menu point window at the very top and select Package Manager. A little window pops up and we go to the first tab and change it to Packages, My Assets. And at the moment, I have only one asset here, which, as the buttons at the bottom prompt, I could either re-download or import directly into Unity. Hey, future Asuka here. While recording for this video, I realized that this update to the Unity Store only affected the newer version of Unity. And if you are working with one of the older ones, like the SDK necessary version 2019.4.31f1, you will still be able to use the store within Unity directly. The rest is mainly the same as you can open up the package manager through the window menu and then select on the first tab the option My Assets. As you can see, we then also have the download and import buttons here. So back to the video where I was talking about the download. To be clear here, a download will only load the asset into my package manager from the store. I can't actually download the asset and send it to a friend later, for example. This is useful if the asset got updates from their creators and not so useful if you wanted to use them outside of Unity. So keep that in mind whenever you want to buy from the Unity store. These assets are set up in a way that you can only use them here in Unity by default. After the download is complete, we import our asset. This can take a moment and you will have to confirm the import on another pop-up as well. We can then close the package manager and switch back to the scene tab. Our downloaded asset is now under assets within its own folder or not, depending on how the creator set it up. Now what's within this folder is completely depending on the asset you downloaded. For me, it's a model, but for you, it may be something completely different. Next, we take a look online where you guys can find free 3D assets. Always remember though, free doesn't mean you can do whatever you want with it. Don't forget to read and respect the designer's wishes as of how the assets can be used and what is allowed and what isn't. Of course, we can also just try to find a fitting asset on Booth, but sometimes we want to broaden our options and so it's good to know alternatives. Let's say we are searching for a halo, as it's a popular accessory for a lot of VTubers. We would go to Google and search free 3D model Angel Halo, not to be confused with a certain game of the same name. Sketchfab is a very good website to find free stuff that is allowed to be used privately and commercially. And no, this is not a sponsored video. We type in Angel Halo in the search box and a lot of the assets that don't have a dollar sign at the top right will be free to use. Just make sure that you also check the downloadable option in the search filters first, as a lot of creators use the site for portfolio showcases as well. Once you found an asset you like, click on the image and check the license. In this case, we have the Creative Commons license. And if you got no idea what that means, you can click on the little question mark icon right next to it. Here you will find all the restrictions and rules that come with this license. In our case, we would be free to share it, rebuild it to our liking and change it. If we give the appropriate credit, name the changes we made and that's it. We can download it after creating an account and upon download, we can see another mention of the license that we are even allowed to use this asset commercially. Now, each asset comes in different formats and for our purpose, the FBX format would be the best as we can alter it in Blender but also okay would be the object format .obg or the internal unity format .unity package or a .blend file that we could import and export ourselves from Blender later as a .fbx. All we have to do after downloading it is dragging it into the assets section. Accessories like these usually come with their mesh and a material as well as textures. 
For some imports, you would have to extract the material first as well and apply it to the item in question after, which would be done here in the inspector to the right under the point Material if you click on your asset. If the item didn't come with any material, you can create your own together with a texture or just set a base color like yellow for a halo, for example. Then we would apply the item to our model. A halo, same as a face mask, for example, would have to be linked to the avatar's head to move whenever the head moves while still being glued to the part that it's supposed to be attached to. Just dragging the item around with the movement tools will not make it stick automatically. We open up our avatar with this little arrow here at the side of the avatar's name and thus enter prefab or edit mode. If our asset came packaged, it will have a white box beside its name instead of the frame cube like our avatar. To unpack it properly for use, we right click on it, go to prefab and select unpack completely. All we need to do now is place the asset under the head via a drag and drop and thus link it to our headphone. If the asset came with its own materials and shaders, don't forget that the VRM format only supports the M-Tune shaders fully upon export, which means you would have to trade the shaders before exporting. To do that, we click on the material or materials of the asset and change the shader in the inspector to M-Tune. We would need to have the UniVM plugin installed to do that, which I assume you have done already to import your V-Rate model. Otherwise, the M-Tune option will not be available in the drop-down menu. If you are using a custom Blender model instead and you want to keep your shaders intact or use other custom shaders than M-Tune, you just have to remember the following. You can do that by using the SDK plugin to export your avatar to be used with VC Face, as this will keep shaders intact but gets rid of the .vrm format and will limit your use of tracking softwares after, as so far I only know of VC Face that can work with it. Either way, you install any plugin over the menu point assets import package, custom package, and then select the plugin before following the instructions on screen. Then we would have the VM0 menu or the SDK menu at the top of our menu bar and we could start exporting. Just select your avatar's name and select the export option of your choice. Don't forget to set a version for the avatar for VM and export. Now we can test our asset in VC phase by loading our avatar in and move around to see if the attachment looks good or has to be altered. You would just go back to Unity and adjust the placement or size and export again if you weren't happy with it on your first try. I hope this tutorial was useful. I see you all on the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day.